Lane Morgan College with 199 kills. Our first kill on the match tonight will be our 200th kill of the season. <laughs> All right, after the study of administration of justice, forensic science, and mathematics, and achieved a 3.5 Jade is joined by her family. Jade has been a part of the Mark family for two years and has been a major powerhouse as our middle blocker. As a middle blocker and co-captain, Jade has contributed so much to this program. With 147 night kills and a total of 15 blocks, Jade has pursued nursing and academics at Fullerton and has attained a 4.0 GPA in that program. We hope that Jade is
welcome to Fullerton College Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK. We are live from the Hornets' nest on the campus of Fullerton College as the Hornets take on the Pirates. Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Fisk and alongside me is Garrett Geimer and Jerry Roque, where this is going to be the final regular season game of the season for the Fullerton Hornets and Orange Coast College. As we get set for tonight's matchup, Orange Coast is currently second in the OEC with an 11 and four record while the Fullerton Hornets are Kind of in seventh place with a five and 10 record. Orange Coast is gonna try to make their bid for the playoffs a little bit stronger for a higher seed with the win tonight, while Fullerton is gonna look to spoil that. So what do you think, Garrett? What do you think is going to be a key player here for the Hornets tonight? For the Hornets, I, you definitely gotta look at Moretta Poy. She is the team leader in scoring at 198, which is also ninth in the total conference. And this high-powered uh, Pirates team, you have to look at the defensive players for the Hornets, Samantha Martinez and Miley Grace Tabone to have a big night against Orange Coast. And on the other side of the court, you got Orange Coast College. Who do you think is going to be, uh, who do you think Fuller's going to have to stop the most for the Pirate side? And then on the Pirates side, I think one of the biggest things that they're going to have to go look out for is uh, number two, Zapata Reeves. Currently, right now, she has a 242 kills and 262 digs on the season. So she's definitely going to be one of those offensive and defensive specialists. So if the Hornets are going to want to come out with a victory today, they're going to need to work around her because she'll definitely be one of the biggest threats they'll see today. Well, both teams' last matchup, Orange Coast beating Saddleback on the road three sets to none in an easy sweep while Fullerton lost their last match to Irvine Valley at home three sets to none. As we get set for the first set here on the court for the Hornets, you got Miley Grace Taban. Taban. You also got Kaya Owens on the court as well as, as, well as Jade McIntyre. and Moretta Poi, and now you got Samantha Martinez as well. And then over here on the Orange Coast College side, for the Pirates, they're gonna have Emily Payne, Brisa Zapata-Reeves, they're gonna have Brandlin out there, as well as Paige Cutright, Leah Thibault, and Teresia uh, Ametman, uh, as well as Grace Holmgren. So pretty solid squad out there for the Pirates. And we'll see how they uh, venture out today. The last time these two teams faced off on the same court was on October 14th earlier this year where Orange Coast won three sets to none. They won that at Orange Coast College. So Fullerton's gonna try to return the favor on, on, on their home turf. So to start things off, it's going to be Orange Coast starting things off with the serve with Grace Holmgren behind the baseline. Waiting for the referee signal for the serve and we are underway for this OEC contest. As it gets tapped over to net by Jade McIntyre. Coming in on the kill was Reeves and it hits the floor and the first point comes in for the Pirates. Zapita Reeves with lots of strength and power gets the right corner, makes it one nothing for the road team so far. Holmgren now sees mind the baseline, goes for the serve. Poi now on the receive to Owens, to Bone. Oh, Taban gets it over the net, but it gets slammed down immediately back by Natalia Brandlin to double the score to 2-0. Looks like Samantha Martinez and Tabone were right there. For, um, almost a little collision there, both trying to go for the ball. So Holmgren now stays behind the baseline, trying to make it three in a row. Poi now on the receive. Poi taps it over, gets kept alive, and... Now Fullerton's gonna try to take advantage. Poi now trying to tap it over, hits the top of the net, and it's gonna be a four touch violation against the Hornets. Yeah, good set by Mayfield. Um, Poi just unable to get it over. Maybe jumped a little too early for her to get a good hit off on it. Poi on the receive, gets bump set back to Poi, goes in for the attack, gets kept alive by Payne. Coming in on the attack, it's slammed down off the hands of the Hornets, but Zapita Reeves gets a nice angle on it to make it four straight for the Pirates. Got through the double team block by McIntyre and Mayfield. So Holmgren still hasn't been moved off that baseline, coming in for the fifth point in a row on a serve. Poi on another receive, 
Back to Mayfield. Poi trying to tap it over and gets immediately slammed back down with Brandlin getting the block. What an athletic play by Brandlin, able to get her hand up there. It looks like she jumped a little early, but the ball floated for her just long enough to get the fingers on it to score that point. So now a timeout has been taken by Fullerton. We are in the first set here with the score being 5 nothing in favor of OCC. You are watching Fullerton College Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK. We'll take a look at the screen here as we get a little bit of a sophomore profile. We get number 19, Ann Mayfield. She's been a part of this program for two years now. Has become Hornets captain starting this season after a year of not setting and playing as defensive specialist and libero. She came back not only to set the season, but always become one of the top three hitters, playing as both our setter and opposite hitter. You can see she's racked up 141 kills, 298 assists, 28 aces, and 180 digs for this team. So as we get back to the action, home ground on the serve. Poi targeted once again to Mayfield and gets attacked. Gets tapped over by Zapita Reeves, gets the line, makes it six straight points now for OCC. And Fullerton drastically needs to get this ball. Hopefully they can slow the game down and make a stop here. Holmgren now on the serve, hits Kaya Owens. But Poe now, or Poi gets it back over the net. As it gets slammed down on the attack now by Zapita Reeves. Making it seven straight, lucky seven for the Pirates. And you can see why this Pirates team is so good. They they often start out really quickly, and with, which makes it really tough on the opponents to even get in the game from the start. So Kaya Owens was subbed out for Amelia Haas. Poi now on the receive once again. Haas on the bump set and gets pushed over by Poi. It's going to be a point, though, for a double touch violation, though, against the Hornets. So now it's eight points in a row. Holmgren behind the baseline, going down the line, and that one just goes right out of bounds. Poi letting that ball go out of bounds for the first point for Fullerton. Yep, that's the break that Fullerton needed to get this ball to start shipping back at the lead. And what better person to do it with Ann Mayfield behind the line. And Mayfield leads the team with 29 service aces so far this season prior to tonight. If she gets another, that will be her 30th of the year. And Mayfield on the serve gets bumped by Zapita Reeves. It's crossed over and going in for the attack was Hania. Tabon, or Taban now hits it over. And gets hit down by Natal Natalia Brandlin. Goes off a hand of Fullerton in the front row and makes it 9 to 1. Natalia Brandon with a huge jump at the line to get it over everybody's head. So Bita Reeves now on the, on the serve. She leads the team in kills, attacks, and points. Martinez with the bump set with McIntyre on the receive. Slammed down by Honia, but gets denied by Poi. Going back the other way. Poi now coming in for the attack, but gets nothing but the net and ricochets right back to her for a four touch violation. And now OCC gets to the 10 point milestone for the first set. Yeah, it looks like Fullerton's kind of running around out there, not really finding a groove to, to get clean shots on the balls and blocks. So Peter Reeves on the serve. Poi targeted once again. Owens now back to Poi. Goes for the attack, but it's too long past the baseline. It's now a 10 point deficit now. It's 11 to one in the first set. Yeah, it looks like Orange Coast is targeting Poi these last couple rallies. They're not trying to put it over to Samantha Martinez or to Bone. This time they target, or target Martinez, gets set or dumped by Ann Mayfield. Mayfield with the bump set, back to Poi. She taps it over. Bump set made by Payne, going in for the attack. It was Emma Honia. So another timeout taken by Fullerton. Their second timeout of the set. This is Hornet Volleyball. Uh, Hornet Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK. The score is 12 to one in favor of OCC. As we have another look at a sophomore spotlight here with Jade McIntyre. She's been part of the Hornet family for two years now and has been, major, uh, has been a major powerhouse as their middle blocker. As their middle blocker and co-captain she has contributed so much to the program with 147 kills and a total of 52 blocks prior to coming into tonight. 
Jade has pursued in nursing and academics here at Fullerton and has obtained a perfect 4.0 GPA in the program. Everyone in the Hornet Athletic Department hopes that Jade accomplishes everything she wants and more in her next chapter of life. So as we get to the end of the stoppage here, it's 12 to one in favor of the Pirates. You got Owens, McIntyre, Martinez, Mayfield, and Taban on the court for the Hornets. Zapita Reeves on the serve, Poi targeted once again. It's a free ball, gets slammed by Honia, but gets kept alive. Poi now going in for the attack. Gets kept alive by Zapita Reeves once again. Going back the other way now. Thigh ball goes for the attack. Owens now bumps it back over. Gets set and hits the floor with Natalia Brandlin with lots of power, making it 13 to one. Leah Fabalt with two good sets on that. That volley, um, Brandon finally got the second one. Point now on the receive. Goes back to Mayfield and trying to get it tapped over but denied. Natalia Brandlin, or Brandlin on the block in the front row makes it 14 to one. As we have a substitution being made as Kaya Owens gets subbed out for Amelia Haas. Haas now sets it over to Poi, and that one's in bounds. That will be Moretta Poi's 200th kill on this season. Congratulations to her. She is ninth in conference so in that kill stat statistic. So it's now 14 to two. Perez on the serve. It's set over once again to Thibault. That one hits the floor, makes it 15 to two. So only 10 points away from the Pirates taking the first set as they are not letting up to start off this match. Yeah, you can see that Fullerton's kind of backing up to counteract the aggressiveness of Orange Coast and that one just fell at her feet for the point as well, so. Haas now sets it over to Perez. She goes cross court, gets kept alive though and gets tapped down by Jade McIntyre in the middle of the net, making it 15 to three. Yeah, a little floater at the net. Jade McIntyre with the dunk to get the Hornets second back or first back-to-back -back point of this match. McIntyre on the serve gets set by Holmgren and gets slammed down onto the floor by Cutright. So it's now 16 to three in the first set as Martinez comes back in after that side out. Yeah, it looks like Orange Coast has made it a priority to attack that back middle row kind of shallow in the shallow towards the middle of the court and they're getting a lot of points out of it so far. So Tara Kala now on the serve, but hits the top of the net and comes back. So it's gonna be a free side out now for the Hornets, which is gonna put Milia Haas now behind the baseline. Haas with the serve, targets pain on the attack. Going in for the attack that time though was cut right, gets it in the court and makes it 17 to four. Put it in the zone coverage between Haas and Castillo. Not letting Fullerton's big blockers up front dictate the game. Tybolt now on the serve, gets Haas setting it over for Perez. Bump set by Payne, coming in for the cross court attack. It was Kingsley Mason. Sliding attempt by Samantha Martinez. It looks like her foot got out from under her, trying to make that awkward hit. Good placement for Golden, um, excuse me, Orange Coast. Thibault now on the serve. Perez on the receive. Tahaz going in for the attack was Burke. Gets kept alive though. As an attack by OCC gets denied by Corey Burke for the side out, making it 18 to five. And that's the strength of this Fullerton team, Jacob. That front row, those blocks, and Mayfield, Moretta Poy, Jade McIntyre, Corey Burke getting up there. So Perez gets subbed out. Now we see Taban now on the serve, going down the line on the serve. Tapped over by Mason. 
Mayfield on the attack now. And OCC unable to capitalize on it. So it's going to be now 18 to 6 now. Keeping Taban behind the baseline. Taban now on the serve. Going down the line once again and hits the floor as Terakawa trying to go for the dive but unable to get a touch on it. It's now 18 to seven. Yeah, it looks like Fullerton's kind of going with the finesse hits of the last three. They've gotten three points on it. Let's see if they can continue here. Taban with the floater this time with Zapita Reeves diving for it, but that time it gets slammed down and out of bounds by Paige Cutright. So now the Hornets are only down by 10. A little too much power on that last hit for Orange Coast. Maybe a little bit of emotion in that one. Sneaks just po past the line. And it breaks for the Hornets. OCC now gets the side out. They're only six points away from taking the first set. There's now Paige Cut right now going to be coming in for the serve. Currently has 17 service aces prior to tonight, but that time hits nothing but the net for another score for Fullerton. Yeah, we started this match out, it was like 10 to two at one point, and now it looks like the Hornets are starting to get some, some momentum as of late. So now Samantha Martinez now going behind the baseline for the serve. As it gets pushed over by Mason. Mayfield coming in for the attack, kept alive by Payne. As it gets targeted, or Brandlin targets Taban on the attack now. Gets OCC to the 20 point milestone. So they're only five points away now. And that's what this uh, quick, tack, quick attack does, does for Golden West. It brings the defenders up and then they have to go backpedal and defend the Martinez back line. Martinez. And it's now gonna be a two touch violation against Loretta Poi as she hit it, not simultaneously with both of her hands. So it's now 21 to nine. Holmgren now on the attack. Martinez on the receive to Haas. As we had a joust in front of the net, another joust. OCC now gets a free ball. Coming in on the attack was Honia, but gets denied. It looked like it went off Moretta Poi's hand, so the Pirates will retain the ball. So Martinez now on the bump receive to Haas. Poi now feints it over with Payne setting it. Martinez with a big diving dig there. As now gets bumped back over by Haas. Holmgren on the set over to Brandlin. Makes it 23 to nine now. Yeah, it looks like uh, Tabo was racing for that ball and it kind of flipped over to Ann Mayfield who wasn't expecting it. Mayfield on the receive to Haas. Back to Mayfield coming in for the attack to get the Hornets to double digits. It's now 23 to 10 now with Fullerton taking possession with once again Ann Mayfield on the serve. Ann Mayfield nice placement on that last attack right back corner. Looking for her 30th service ace of the season still. Trying to get it here. Gets received well by Zapita Reeves. Zapita Reeves now coming in on the attack. Mayfield though there. Bumps hit by Martinez. Depoy coming in for the attack. Kept alive though by Thibault. Martinez with the diving dig keeps it alive. But they're gonna say it hits the floor. So now Zapita Reeves now gonna be coming in for the serve. Reeves with the serve, Samantha Martinez puts it up for Kaya Owens, she flips it over. Uh, Reeves is there and then it's punched over but saved by Thibault. Moretta Poy down the middle of the court. Set one, two, three. Okay. That one was a strike by, they keep it alive. Marina Poy up at the net, trying to keep it alive once again. And there's Thibault to save the day once more. 
Mayfield on the set. Here's Kaya Owens over on the attack. And it's blocked by Jade McIntyre. So Emma Hone with the attack and Jade McIntyre gets up as Tabo subs out for Camille Castillo and Moretta Poe comes out for Haley De La Riva. Dumped over by McIntyre, saved. Initial nice block by, by <clears throat> East Loss, but it's batted away and denied. And guys, what you're seeing here is that's the first set as OCC takes it 25 to 11 in the first set. This is Hornet Volleyball on 90.1. K B P K. Welcome to Fullerton College Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK. We're at the Hornets' Nest. The score here is 1-0 Orange Coast. They took the first set. The second set is, under, is about to get underway as we talk about the end of the year. It is conference team time. Guys, for me, I, I had to put Cheyenne Martinez from Cyprus as my player of the year. She's first in kills, first in kills per set, and one of the best defensive players with 176 digs on the year as well. And she did have an excellent game against us. We did have the chance to call that. We didn't get to see their away game. Fortunately, they, Fullerton College did lose that one. But at home, they did put a really good matchup on that one. And I do remember seeing her. She was all around the court, and it's a very good choice. Yep, and she's got the she's got Cyprus at 9-6 and six this year, which is f fourth for OEC, which probably a playoff spot, I would say. Oh yeah, for sure. And for me, I think a player of the year candidate for OEC this year was gonna be Tasheras from Santa Ana College. As she's had 217 kills, averaging 4.52 kills per set. And she's been incredible with lots of power. We yeah. saw her a few weeks ago when she took on Fullerton. She had lots of power. I was intimidated just sitting at the desk hearing that ball be hit 100 miles an hour oh, yeah. from wherever and, she was. And you could definitely tell that there was a little bit more you know, to that shot every single time she came up and approached it. Just the way she approached her step up, coming up into the air, and just the sheer power and the boom that you would hear from that ball striking. And, and it was something else. Like She's definitely going to be one of the top scorers in the, o, uh, in the OEC, and we've seen that, and as she did against Fullerton as well. And that Santa Ana team, I, I feel like it really runs through her. She really has the team at a third third best in the OEC at 10 and 5 for another playoff spot. On the court in front of us, though, we have Miss Leah Tabolt for the, for the Pirates. We also got Grace Hol Holgram. Zapata Reeves is out there along with Natalie Bradlin and Emily Payne. Jacob, give me the Hornets. Well, you got Taban on the court as well as, well as Martinez, Mayfield, Owens, McIntyre, and Poy as well on the court. So Ann Mayfield behind the back line for the Hornets getting on getting ready to start this second period. Flipped it over, attacking that back corner, and there is 
Emma Honey, Honey with the attack to give the Pirates an early lead to start this first period. Yeah, Honey with great awareness there. Rather than trying to force her way through the block, she just taps it over with a feint, and Fullerton are unable to do anything about that. Served over by Zapata Reeves. There's an attack by McIntyre, which is blocked, and that ball for um, Grace Holgram is out of line. Point for Fullerton. Yeah, Honey trying to go on the cross court, but unable to get the line. Instead, she hits it out of bounds past the sideline. So Fullerton able to get that free point there. As Moretta Poy and Thibault step out, Lariva with the with the and that one will jet out of bounds in the out, outside corner. It looks like it'll be rewarded to the Pirates. The the ball was just out of reach for Camilla Castillo. Attack there by Castillo. Castillo on the attack there was able to get it through the block and OCC unable to follow through with it. Now we're all tied up at two points apiece. Elizabeth Perez behind the back line. She has eight service aces this year. That attack was blocked by Corey Burke and Mayfield on the recovery. Kaya Owens on the attack set up for Emma Honey and it will go just out for another point for Fullerton. Great block by Corey Burke at the middle court, unable to force her way through, and then she was able to assist uh, Perez on the attack on the left side. Perez on the attack, set up, and there is Tony again tapping it over, but it is saved. Camille Castillo on the attack, set up for OCC. Back over to Fullerton. Mayfield sets up Kaya Owens and is denied. Honey on the attack one more time. It almost flies in the middle, but it is picked up by the Hornets. Set once more, and it will be tapped over softly by Paige Cutright. By Paige Cutright for the point for the Pirates. And she built a little campfire there on the Fullerton side. She had four Hornets diving for it, but no one able to get a touch on it. Yep, just a little drop in the bucket over the middle. So Tara Aqua with the serve to Fullerton, set up by Mayfield, Corey Burke on the attack, but it will be denied by Cutright once more. Yeah, Cutright just ready for that, saw the whole attack through, and there's a reason she has over 60 blocks this season. Serve is up, there is De La Riva on the, on the dig, set up by the Pirates, it's gonna be Tossed over back to Kaya Owens, trying to go cross court, but it will touch the net, and it will be a point for the Pirates. Owens trying to go cross court, but instead it rides to top of the net and just rolls back into their side. A little bad luck there, but high risk, high reward, and sometimes it doesn't work. Ter Aqua on her third consecutive serve. Ta Owens on the attack. It gets denied by the wall of Paige. Page cut right. Page cut right. She's been incredible so far from start to finish in that front row. As Kaya Owens checks out for Ariana Eastloss on the Fullerton side. Serve is up once more. Corey Burke there to serve. Trying to tap it over, but they cannot get it. It will touch the net. And back once again, Tara Aqua on her fifth consecutive serve so far in this period. Flips it over, received by Fullerton, set up by Ann Mayfield, but Corey Burke could not get a hand on it. So once again, Tara Aqua will go behind the baseline for another serve. Falls up, it's over. 
picked by De La Riva, and there is Corey Burke with just a little bit more power trying to attack the corner just out of bounds. And th this is that fast kind of start that we've seen from Orange Coast. Moretta, so, oh. Moretta Poi, the sophomore spotlight for us right now. Moretta transferred from Fullerton this last year, but she has accomplished many things in the short period of time as an outside hitter for the Hornets. She leads Fullerton College with 199 kills. Her first kill of the night was 200th for her, so congratulations to her. Uh, she is studying administration to justice and has achieved a 3.5 GPA for this Hornets team and school. So as we take a look at the OEC standings here, you currently got Irvine Valley currently in first place. Orange Coast uh, trailing behind them. Uh, so Ir Irvine Valley is 14 and one, Orange Coast is 11 and four. So there's no chance for OCC to catch up. But you got Santa Ana right behind them with a 10 and five record. And Cypress trailing them with a nine and six. Fullerton has a five and 10 record. So if they win this, they have a chance to tie Saddleback for sixth and seventh place with a six and 10 record if they win. So back to serve once more is Taraqua. We'll get you those lineups in a second. Popped over and Mayfield. And there is Ariana Isos on the attack. It was picked up by Golden West, Paige Cutright. And it will be a side out for Fullerton as they get the ball to receive, to serve, excuse me. And Amelia Haas backcourt for the service. Balls up, Amelia Haas on the serve. Strike over the middle is Samantha Martinez with the dig, trying to poke it over is Mayfield. Little confusion for the Hot Pirates up front. They go to the attack once more and it will be denied. Popped over again. There's the set for Honey and it's in the middle of the court for Fullerton. There's Camilla Castillo on the attack, tipped over by Paige Cutright with the slam down. To interject real quick, we have a former Hornet volleyball star on our on our broadcast. <laughs> we mispronounced her name all wrong all last year. We want to make it up to you. <laughs> McKenna, and I'm not going to mess it up, Mokri. That's right, yeah. There you go, joining <laughs> us. And McKenna, thank you for joining us here tonight on sophomore night here at the Hornet's Nest. Tell us your experience about playing for the Hornets. Yeah, um, I think I've, I've been on many different volleyball teams. This is one that I, from the beginning, felt like I was at home. And a lot of people don't take that into consideration when they're looking into a collegiate volleyball team. They're looking for skill level and you know past uh, championships, all that stuff. Um, I came in looking for some people that I truly love to play with, and that's what I found. <laughs> And that point goes to Orange Coast, and they're still up 11 to 5. So you found a place that you loved and, uh, and people that you loved. Um, where where did you play out in high school? And Because I know you weren't from here. Mm -hmm. no. no. So what, where did you play out, and what, brought you, uh, what else brought you out here? Mm -hmm. um, I played in Austin, Texas, kind of outside of Austin at Georgetown High School. Um, I got brought out here recruiting, actually, for another school, for Concordia. And... Um, Things just kind of never go the way you expect it to, and one thing led to another. I kind of found Fullerton, and um, I found Megan and Philip, and they brought me in, and then it transitioned into Nilu, and met all these great people, and I'm happy it turned out that way. So. All right, and when we saw you play, you were kind of a killer out there <laughs> when, you, when you got the chance. Thank I mean, you. <laughs> so what, what brought that mindset to you? Is that the way you've always played, or is that something you developed over the years? It's definitely something you develop, and again, I think that plays into if you're surrounded by the correct people, and if you're with people that are encouraging and people that all have the same mindset, um, then you're driven to do the same. So I think that uh, strong influences were like, like Faith and like Anne and like those people that are big leads that make you want to try harder and make you want to bring a presence. Okay. And are you are you playing this year anywhere? Um, no, I'm not playing indoor, but I'm probably going to play the sand season just to feel it out. 
Oh, is that your first time playing in sand? Or? I played beach last semester, and that, that was my first time, so I'm definitely learning. Um, but it's fun to try new things, so I'm working on it. What's the difference between sand and beach? As the score is 12 to 7, still OCC, but Fullerton with Samantha Martinez on the serve. Um, I would say the main difference is that in indoor, you can get away with a lot of things with just power, and that doesn't really work in beach. You okay. don't get to jump up high. You don't get to just kind of put it wherever you want. You have to learn placement. You have to be smart. You have to um, just work in that new environment and play with two people with a lot more spots. So. <laughs> okay. As there's a timeout taken, Fullerton down four points in the second set, 12 to 8, as they lost the first set as we're here with McKenna Mokri, former Hornet, on the volleyball squad. And what does Fullerton have to do to get back into this and really take control? Um, I think right now coming in, OCC definitely is always known to be super strong. So it's, it can be a little bit intimidating, but I think once they get over that, we definitely have the ability to come through, um, put up a good block because OCC definitely has the strong hitters. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to kind of stop them that way with the block and set up our defense around it, we'll be, we'll be a lot better off. Okay, and anything you would like to leave us with about the program, about yourself, or, you know? Um, just that I love the program. I'm happy, to, I'm happy that I found it, and I love these girls, and they're all in it for the right reasons, and good karma's coming up to everyone's way. <laughs> cool, cool. McKenna, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. So as we come back in the broadcast... It'll be 12 to 8 OCC with Samantha Martinez on the serve. She flips it over to Zapata, set up. And there is an attack executed by Kingsley Mason to get the point for OCC. She, lots of power so far in all of OCC's attacks. While Fullerton is closer in this set, something I've noticed is Fullerton is more reliant on getting the accurate points while OCC is more focused on brute strength. Back on the court again was Holgram for the Pirates as they serve that one. It is going to be tipped awkwardly off the hands of Moretta Poy, and that will be another point towards the Pirates once again. bramlin has been dominant at the front row. Every time that ball comes just near the front net, she just slams it right down. Set up for Mayfield, or excuse me, set up by Mayfield as Corey Burke slams it down in the front corner of the... Pirates defense. And Mayfield back deep to serve for the Hornets. She is 10th in the conference with 29 service aces this season. Balls up, received over for Orange Coast. There is an attack executed by Emma Hone. Honey going cross court on that one, getting the sideline now, making it a 10, 10 points away from making this two sets to none. Zapata Reeves back deep serving for the Pirates. It is picked up by Moretta Poy. She's also on the attack here and it will flip over off the fingers of Leah Tabolt and it will be a score for the Hornets. Great job by, by Poy there, both on the reception and then the execution of that kill. And that point now gets the Hornets into double-digit territory and only down by five now. Balls up for the Fullerton set up. This time it's to ball again. And she will get the point scored. And we're back with another cav it's a cavalcade of stars here. That might be too young of a re reference for you guys. Yeah. But we're here with first he first year head coach for the women's basketball team here at Fullerton, Dan Desmond. And first off, congratulations on a consolation victory. Thank at you. The, I forgot what tournament that was. Uh, Earn our stripes over at Riverside City College. There you go. Congratulations on that. How is it being a first year head coach? Oh, absolutely love it. It's been great. I, I was here for a few years as an assistant coach and. Uh, Moving over a seat is life-changing. I love it. It's, it's so exciting. A lot of pressure, but uh, I've been enjoying it so far. Oh, and then explain moving over uh, from a seat. And you, you move over a seat to a legend, from a legend, and oh, yeah. now you move over. Tell us about that pressure. Uh, so, like you said, moving over after, after a legend. I was fortunate enough to work with Marsha Foster for, for the past five seasons, so I, 
I learned a lot during that time, um, which really helped, helped make the transition a little bit easier. Uh, but moving over is just it's a lot more. Uh, if the offense isn't working, it's on you. If the defense isn't working, it's on you. Kind of the, the buck stops here when you're the head coach of the program. Um, so it's it's been an experience, and, and I've been really enjoying it. And like I said, fortunate enough to have that past few years of experience working with Marsha to, to help me out and get me through the, through the year so far. Well, and I, that was actually my next question. How are you enjoying it? You just said immensely, so good oh. things. 18 to 10, OCC here in the second set. They took the first set, 25 to 11. And we're here with head coach Dan Desmond of the bas women's basketball team. And your philosophy as a coach? Uh, defense comes first. I, f I find it a lot easier to come away with, with success in games if, if you're keeping the other team off the board. <laughs> so um, there's, there's a toughness. I, uh, my time uh, going into school, I, st I studied sport and performance psychology. So the mental aspect of the game is huge with me. So being tough defensively, being able to stay present in the moment during the game. Um, that's that's really big, big with me. I wanted to ask you, as a coach, and you've been doing this for a long time, <laughs> has that become more relevant in sports today, that mental aspect? Uh, relevance is an interesting way to put it. I would say it becomes more known. Okay. Um, it's always been relevant that individuals need to have the mental part of the game locked down, um, but it's it's become much more accepted as as in practice, like spending a significant amount of practice on that, working on the mental game has mm -hmm. just become much more accepted. Um, if you look back at the, the greats throughout time, they, they always had strong mental games, but um, now there's there's professions and there's coaches in every professional sport franchise you can think of has a mental skills coordinator um, or multiple on staff. So it's, it's become a bigger part of the game just publicly, um, but it's always been a part of it kind of privately, I would say. Okay, as we're time out, about to get back into playing this second set as OCC with a 19 to 11 lead. Who were some of the key players for you this year in your very first year? I mean, man, this must be exciting, but name some of your key players. Uh, key players, uh, so back uh, first team all tournament uh, just this past weekend, Bree Landeros came up really big for us. Um, definitely, she's a sophomore coming in this year, big player. Um, she's our four, and then Angela Zentejas, uh, other year, she's technically a fourth year player, lost the COVID year and then lost, lost the year last year to a redshirt. So it's, it's wonderful to have someone who's been around the program that long here with us, um, another key player. So those, those two stepping up big for us. Um, we got a good class coming in along with them, but they're, they're kind of stepping up and doing what they need to do to, to get things done. All right, well, well, thank you, Coach. This was just a brief talk because we will be out you know, a little bit later this semester to get more in, deep, in depth with your team and all, but wanted to thank you oh, right yeah. now. Coach, My thank pleasure, you. thank Appreciate you so much for having me on. Go Hornets. Yeah, <laughs> go Hornets. Back on the broadcast, we have a little rally going for Fullerton College. It'll be flipped over by, by Camila Castillo, but blocked by the upfront presence of Miss Paige Cudwright. Back deep to serve for the Pirates is Talia Lee. Balls up, set up by Mayfield, or excuse me, Mayfield on the attack. And batted down in the corner that time by Kingsley Mason for the point for the Pirates. So back deep for the service, Leah Tabolt balls up and is received by the Hornets. Flipped over by Castillo, and it will be a point as it finds the wood here in the Hornets' nest. 21 for the for the Orange Coast Pirates, 13 for your Fullerton Hornets here in this second period of sophomore night. As we have some substitutions being made, you got Campbell coming in in exchange for Terakawa. You also got Tebow getting subbed out as well. Looks like Moretta po Poi, excuse me, is coming in for Haley De La Riva and Camilla Castillo is being opted out for Miley Grace Tabot. Tabot on the serve, up and it's right at the feet of Zapata Reeves. Nice placement for Tabot on that on that service. Yeah, Taban is. Almost first in the team. She's only behind Ann Mayfield on service aces. That time it clips the net 
and the Pirates will have the ball with only three points left to maybe win this period right here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting here because Fullerton is out of timeouts for this set, so there's nothing really they can do to stop the momentum. They just got to find a way to crawl the way back into the second set. So a Montman on the serve for the Pirates, picked up by Thibault, clipped over to Moretta po Poi, but it will be denied at the wall. That time it was Kingsley Mason up there alongside Natalia Brandlin. Yeah, Natalia Brandlin. Thank you. Montman once again on the serve. Clips the middle. Samantha Martinez is there. Flipped over by Ann Mayfield, but it was rejected at the net by Natalia Brandlin again. And the blocking game has been very strong all game long in both sets for OCC as they've just been a monster of a wall for Fullerton. Set point here for the Pirates, flipped over by, and it will be blocked by Natalia Brandon. Brandon once more, or excuse me. Well, it went out of bounds, it so it's gonna be a point for Fullerton, but once again, OCC's wall has been an issue all night long for Fullerton, and they gotta find a way to either get around it or break through it. Amontman and Cutright come out for the, for the Pirates. Here's Z Zapata on the sir on the assist, and it will be over the net and good for Zapata Reeves as the OCC Pirates take the second set, 25 to 15 here at the Hornets' Nest on Fullerton College sophomore night. And the story of the night, I think, in my opinion, has been the blocking game by the Pirates. The Pirates have been dominant all, all match long. All match long in the front row. Fullerton has been unable to break through it. It's just been block after block for OCC. And it's really been Brandlin and Cutright who's been the, mo the most dominant ones in the front row. And Fullerton, if they want to find a way back in this match, they're gonna have to find a way to get around them. Oh, absolutely, and on the offensive side for OCC as well, they look like they're attacking that that back court earlier in this match. Then they kind of shifted towards the middle, trying to pick on Samantha Martinez. She did a great job to to keep the Hornets closer in this last period that we've seen. So, what do you think Fulton is going to have to focus on during this intermission if they want to get back into this? Well, first thing for Fullerton, it kind of looks like it's not really a unified team. They're all kind of going for the ball and kind of looking at each other. So I think they really need to collectively come together and maybe like folk, um, uh, put trust in each other more and just trust their positions on the field and um, getting up there for those blocks. They have blocked a few pirate attacks over, over, the, over the span of this match, especially in that first set. But I think they need to go back and play defense here to kind of limit the power of this number two ranked uh, in the conference OEC Pirates team. And prior to tonight, uh, OEC, uh, OCC was ranked seventh um, in the state in the rankings. So they're going to be they're going to be a powerhouse in these playoffs. But I'm also uh, in the OEC. We also got Irvine Valley. That's going to be interesting. But OCC though. They've been dominant all season long, only losing four matches all season long. And they've only lost 18 sets all season long. It's been incredible. Winning 59, only losing 18. So, I mean, it's just been incredible to watch their performance so far. Yeah, OCC is an incredibly dominant team. As you said, they're fourth in the conference right now. They're 18 and five overall, but four of those losses have come in the OEC conference. So you see how tough this this conference is with the leading one, the leading community college sports in the state, even the nation. Yeah, one of those losses for OCC uh, came just a few weeks ago on November 4th against Cyprus on the road. They lost three sets to two. Cypress is actually currently in fourth place, and they beat Fullerton both times, but one of those matches, Fullerton kept close on home court. So as we take a look, uh, another look at our sophomore spotlight, we got Kaya Owens 
And she's been part of the Fullerton family for two years and is an important asset to Fullerton. Even though she lost half of the season due to an injury, she never stopped showing up for the team. And with her being such utility as playing out as an outside and opposite hitter, as well as a middle blocker, she continued to impact the team. She has 51 kills, 19 blocks, 8 aces, and is pursuing an English and creative writing as her major and has obtained a 3.5 GPA. So on the field for the Pirates, it's going to be Emily Payne, Emma Hone, Brisa Zapata-Reeves, Natalia Bradlin, Rose Whittier, Whit Witter, and Grace Holgram alongside Amontman. So here we go, it's the third set and potentially final set of the Hornets season here. If they want to keep their season alive, they got to win this set. Otherwise, it's a three, three set sweep. That's immediately a huge block made by Brandlin. But Fullerton just taps it over and all four or five players from OCC just stood there and watched it drop. Yeah, a little poke over for the Hornets. Looks like all the controllers died mid-play. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another point for the Hornets. Oh, no. <laughs> we had to wait till the last game to pull that one. That's a good one, Garrett. I like that. Thank you. And Mayfield now on the serve as the controllers reconnect here for OCC <laughs> as the ball gets hit past the baseline with Witter hitting it out of bounds. It's a 2-0 lead to start off the third set for Fullerton and keeping Mayfield behind the baseline leading the team in service aces still looking for that 30th of the year Mayfield on the serve and that one is going off the hands of Zapata Reeves making it three to nothing now great placement there by Mayfield and a little bit more power to that shot as well we could hear a little bit of a stronger boom coming off of that yeah as you see the the OCC defense kind of back up into that backcourt Mayfield on the serve once again. Hits the top of the net, but kept alive by Payne. Gets denied. Gets tapped over by Brandlin. Mayfield sets it over. So now it's another chance here on the attack. It's Honey on the attack. Mayfield keeps it alive. Bump set by Martinez to Poi. Slams it, goes through the wall of Brandlin and goes on the other side of the net to make it four straight points for the Hornets. And Zapata, Reeves, and Brandlin were in the right spot there. They timed it out just perfectly, but the power coming from Poi's shot there, just enough to snake it through and fall back down. So now Mayfield still on the serve. It's kept alive by Zapata, Reeves. Zapata, Reeves taps it over. Martinez with another dive, but no one able to follow through on it as Mayfield tried to get there, but unable to get a second touch on it. Yeah, Mayfield kind of backpedaling on that one. They're expecting more of that block presence for, for OCC. They're defending that net, but, you know, they could pop it over in the back corner as well. So now the leading score is Apato Reeves on the serve. Poi now on the receive to Mayfield. Poi now trying to tap it over. Poi now taps it over. Apato Reeves keeps it alive. Comes over to Witter. Kept alive by Taban. Poi now, as it gets tapped over the net by Isla, but no one up from OCC able to get it over the net, so now it makes it five to one. Great job by Poi to tip it over there to allow that attack by uh, Ann Mayfield. Great placement for Rose Witter on the defensive aspect. So a diving dig made by Zapata Reeves. And gets spiked into the net by Honey. Now makes it six to one. Ball floated over the net a little bit too too long. Um, missed time the jump for Honey, but three Hornets were there just in case that did get flipped over. Della Riva now on the serve. Zapata Reeves now gets kept alive by Mayfield. Isla trying to go on the attack, but. Unable to get it in the court, so it's now a side out for OCC. Yeah, the, de the defense right there kind of got everybody in that front corner, and Areev saw that and just missed. Mayfield now sets it over to, to McIntyre. Lots of power and strength on that one as Emma Honey on the attack there makes it a three-point deficit now, cutting the lead in half. 
Yeah, you see Samantha Martinez. She was going to initially play up to get that one, but the little hesitation right there allowed it to drop towards her feet. Awkward hit on the ball. Gets tapped over by Castillo. Trying to come in on the attack. Was Witter, gets denied. Coming in for the second try. Martinez, though, keeps it alive. Hits the net and gets hunt, hit under the net by McIntyre. As the Pirates now only trail by two. Nice save by Samantha Martinez. Just hard to tell if that ball was gonna get over or not by the front of the Hornets. Not really, not really anybody's fault on that one. Castillo taps it over the net on the receive for a free ball to Rose Witter, who gets the easy kill, making it six to five. So the Hornets, they started off with a five-nothing lead. It's it's complete or it's completely shifted so far. So we got a whistle here as we have a player from Fullerton tying their shoe, as that was Ariana Isla. She's all set up, the referee gives permission now for, as a diving dig attempt made by Della Riva, unable to get a touch on it. So little, now we're all tied up. A little bit of a floater ball there as well. You didn't see a whole lot of spin coming off of that. Payne now on the serve. Martinez dives for it. Martinez taps it over. Bump set by Payne. Going in for the attack was Honey, but gets denied. Coming back for a second attempt was Witter, but gets denied by the wall of the Hornets. Jade McIntyre blocked both those shots. They, they probably would have scored the way this one is going. Great, great play by her. And a great job by Eastloss as well to come in with that assist and give her the extra help. Meanwhile, back on the counterattack, it was cut right on the attack. Ties things once again at lucky number seven for both teams as Martinez comes back in onto the court for McIntyre for the Hornets. While we see Holmgren leave the court for OCC in exchange for Terracala. Terracala now on the serve, ball in her hand. Going down the line. Mayfield with the set to Corey Burke. Cutright gets the bump set to it. Trying to tap it over. Martinez keeps it alive. Tapped over, but bumped out of bounds by Castillo. So now the Pirates take the first lead, or their their first chance at the lead in the third set. Yeah, we saw the same the same kind of lead start off with Terraqua serving. Maybe she's the momentum, guys. Ball gets slammed down and hits Martinez as Paige Cutright with lots of impact on that, making it a two-point lead now. And the Pirates really relentless on these rebound shots, trying to take advantage of every single opportunity they can to get that ball into the ground. So Terracama now remains, and it's going to be a service ace targeting Martinez that time. So now the Pirates get to double-digit territory to, as we get near the halfway point of the third set, as the Hornets are going to take their first time out of the third set. As the score in this third set is 10 to seven in favor of OCC, the set score is two nothing in favor of the Pirates. You are watching Fullerton College Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK. And another quick sophomore highlight, we have Miley Grace Taban. Miley has been with us for the past two years and was a key factor in our back row defense as a defensive specialist. Miley's accomplished a lot in these past two years. Uh, getting one of the best serving records at Fullerton College, the record of five aces in a match, and she's currently leading the team with a total of 29 aces. Right next to Samantha Martinez, she's done an outstanding job as a defensive specialist with 207 digs and a 93% passing percentage. On the academic side, Miley has been pursuing kinesiology and obtained a 3.7 GPA here at Fullerton College. And that's what we like to see, man. Great student athletes performing on and off the field. And not only are they talented on the court, like you said, they're also talented in the classrooms. I think every spotlight we've seen so far, they've all been above 3.5 GPA so yeah, far. No, and that's great, man. And that's exactly what these next level colleges are going to want to see as well. They want to see the athletic ability on the court, but they also want to know that off the court, you're going to be stable, you're going to be a great student, and you're going to be able to provide for your team and your school. So Terracala now on the serve. This time targets Castillo. Castillo now coming out on the attack, but gets denied by the wall of Paige Cutright as she's been incredible in the front row so far. 
Yeah, and for the Pirates, it's Tara Aqua on the court, as long with uh, Zobata Reeves, Miley Payne, and then we'll get you the rest in a second. Ball gets tapped over, kept alive by Payne. Coming out on the attack was Witter. Comes back over to the OCC side. Witter now coming on the attack. Mayfield now sets it over to Ezla, making it 11 to seven now, as Fullerton gets a side out they need. As now we see Amelia Haas now coming back onto the floor in exchange for Ariana Ezla. Haas now on the serve. So now it's 12 to eight for a side out. Back deep is Witter for OCC. Witter now on the serve. Martinez receives it well. Back to Haas, gets tapped over. And onto the floor was Corey Burke. As now the Hornets are only down by three points. They've been doing a way better job so far in the third set compared to the first two as they're gonna try to get back into this match one point at a time. As Sabo and Moretta Poi come in for East Los and, and De La Riva. Taban on the serve, knocks Zapata Reeves off balance, but it doesn't matter because OCC slamming that one down to make it 12 to nine, only 13 points away, or 12 points away from taking victory as it's now 13 to nine. Yeah, it looks like that connection, Poi and Corey Burke got up there, um, mistimed by Poi, allowing him to sneak through. Selivanov now on the serve. Poi receives it back to Haas. Poi coming on the attack. As it gets bumped back over, but slammed right down immediately by Moretta Poi. Gets the Hornets into double digit territory to make it 13 to 10. And Moretta Poi taking a little page out of the Pirates playbook, just slamming it down right at the, at the net. As we have Corey Burke come out for Jade McIntyre and Samantha Martinez back to serve. Martinez on the serve now. Coming on the attack was Zapata Reeves. Gets the right corner. Perfect placement by Zapata Reeves. Right in the corner, floated right above every head of the Hornets. Perfect little dot in that corner. So Grace Holmgren now on the serve, taps it over. A little bit of a miscommunication there, but Taban gets it a lot, gets the bump set. Mayfield taps it over. Zap Zapata Reeves slams it down, making it 15 to 10. They're only 10 points away from victory here in a three set sweep if they can do that. Fullerton though, gonna try to stop that from happening as they've been playing way better in the third set. As we're waiting for the substitution to conclude here. As we see Mayfield leave the floor as Owens goes in in exchange. Holmgren now waiting for the referee signal. She grants her to serve and that one goes out of bounds as Poi lets it go past the sideline for an easy side out. Yeah, it looks like, you know, this is the last game of the year for Fullerton. It looks like they're having fun out there, even though they're down a little bit on the scoreboard. It seems like, you know, they're enjoying their last, last game of the year with each other as Ann Mayfield comes in for Kaya Owens. Mayfield on the serve, going down the middle, received easily by Payne. Gets blocked by McIntyre and tapped over Mayfield on the receive, set by Martinez. As Isla on the attack makes it now a three point deficit now as it's now 15 to 12. Yeah, it looks like the Hornets are trying to attack that middle of the court, kind of what they were doing at the beginning of this first set. Trying to stay in the game. Mayfield on the serve. Targets this time Zap Zapata Reeves. He's unable to get a clean receive on it. So now they're only down by two now and keeping and Mayfield behind the baseline, the best server for the Hornets. 
Yeah, and I've noticed every time Zapata reads in that back right corner, it looks like the Hornets go to attack her a lot. Reeves targeted again, but this time receives it well. Honey on the attack, but huge save made by Martinez, and then a whiffed attack there. Goes underneath the net, so now it's 16 to 13. As OCC is gonna try to wrap this third set up and try to call it a day here. As they go back to their leading scorer, Zapata Reeves behind the baseline. They target Poi once again, back to Mayfield. Poi coming in for the attack, gets it through the wall though, towards the middle. As now they get the side out immediately back for Fullerton. Yeah, as Miley Grace Tabone steps off and in comes Castillo for Fullerton. Poi taking a huge windup, coming in for the serve, goes cross court, trying to go for the back left corner, but just a little bit too far, or too wide I should say, past the sideline. As Natalia Brandon checks out for Paige Cutright for the Pirates. Payne now on the serve, as it's gonna be a service ace as it goes right in front of Loretta Poi on the right side. So now it's 18 to 14 here in favor of the Pirates. More substitutions being made by the Hornets. That'll be Poi checking out for Haley De La Riva. Emily Payne coming in for the serve once again, leading the team in digs. Martinez on the receive, tapped over by McIntyre. Another diving dig by Payne. Huge attack made by Zapata Reeves. As that one on the attack was Camille Castillo, but hits the top of the net and ricochets back for a four-touch violation. As a timeout has been taken by Fullerton. The score is 19 to 14 in the third set. The set score is two to nothing in favor of the Pirates. You are watching Fullerton College Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK. So Jacob, I wanna bring back this OEC standings page. We got a brief moment to talk about it earlier, but now we're starting to get into some playoff volleyball. We have OCC on this list, ranked second in the Orange Empire Conference standings, right behind Santa Ana, Cypress as well, and Irvine Valley, we got the opportunity to see them come in. We already know, some. Uh, we do have a lot of OEC teams that tend to make the playoffs this year. Irvine Valley, OCC, Santa Ana, and Cypress are going to be probably four of those teams that go into this, but Golden West is trailing right behind there and they might be able to get a fifth seed in there. Uh, how do you think the Orange Empire Conference kind of shows itself each year in these playoffs? Well, it definitely shows it's a strong conference. It's definitely something that you have to be on the top of your game if you want to have a chance to win the conference. So considering that every year they're just full of strong teams, it shows that if you win the OEC Conference, odds are you might be a state champion. Oh yeah, definitely. And this OCC team is just not too far behind uh, Irvine Valley College and they could definitely pull through in a type of playoff game. Paying down to serve, Mayfield sets it over to Castillo as it goes off the hands of OCC, but down, the, down across the line of the net. So Fullerton now 10 points away from stealing the third set here but still down by four. McIntyre on the serve. Guys, it gets slammed down to the floor by Paige Cutright. Samantha came off the field, or excuse me, the court for a brief play, um, and they went right to attack her replacement, McIntyre, to get that point back for o OCC. So now it's 20 to 15, five points away from victory here for OCC. Mayfield, though, sets it over. Coming back on the attack was Zapata Reeves, but it goes past the baseline. So now it's 20 to 16. And so we're gonna get a little more interesting here as we get into the crunch time here in the third set. As now you got Amelia Haas coming in for the serve. And Ariana Eastloss checks out. Haas now on the serve, going down the line. As that one goes through the wall, Paige Cutright slams it down from the middle of the floor, making it 21 to 16. Nice set by Tara Aqua there. 
Rose Witter now on the serve. Fullerton out of timeouts now. So they have to get back into this match on their own. And just like that, that serve goes out of bounds past the baseline, which is a desperation point that Fullerton needed. As it's now 21 to 17. And you got the second best server on the team, Miley Grace Taban coming in to serve. Taban coming in to serve for Moretta Point, or excuse me. Taban now coming in to serve. As that one is gonna be out of bounds. So Miley Taban comes in on the substitution and instantly makes an impact, making it 21 to 18. Um, as Taban comes in for Haley De La Riva, and she's back to serve again. Taban on the serve, received well this time by Zapata Reeves and gets slammed down. But it's gonna be a point for OCC for hitting it over the net before it came over. So it's gonna be a violation against Fullerton. So now it is 22 to 18. OCC retains possession with Selivanov now behind the baseline. Selivanov with only five service aces prior to coming into tonight. Martinez on the receive. To Haas, to Mayfield. Mayfield gets rejected. Bump set by Mayfield. To Poi coming in for the attack. And that one touches the baseline to make it 22 to 19. Wow, I thought that one was going out. Great placement for Poi. Just barely kissing the line there. It did look like it was going to float a little too far, but mm -hmm. just managed to make it. So Samantha Martinez now coming in to serve. Martina is going down the right side. As it was Natalia Brandland coming out on the attack, goes off the hands of the front row of Fullerton. As it's now 23 to 19, only two points away from victory and could potentially end Fullerton's season here if they get those two points. Ellie Winter now coming in, looking to close things out. Six service aces. Prior to coming into tonight, targets the middle. Martinez receives it easily. Haas sets it over. Bump set back to Zapata Reeves. Martinez with the nice receive. Poi coming in, taps it over with the fake, gets it through and over the wall. Getting the Hornets to 20 point milestone here. And now you got Ann Mayfield coming in. One of your best servers. Uh, probably the best time here in the third set. And Ariana Eastloss replacing Amelia Haas. So Mayfield coming in for the serve. As that time it, she targets Zapata Reeves. She does, she's unable to get a bump on that as it goes over her head after getting a touch on it. Makes it 23 to 21. They're only down by two points here trying to make the comeback. Mayfield trying to make it two for two in this rally here. On her serve. Targets Zapata Reeves again. Zapata Reeves coming in on the attack. As Isla coming in on the attack but gets denied by OCC. So now it's not only set point, it is now match point for the Pirates. And you got Zapata Reeves behind the baseline, leading score, leading killer, and leading in attacks for OCC. Or gets tapped over and tapped down by Natalia Brandlin, and that's gonna wrap this game up as Orange Coast wins this three sets to none on sophomore night for Fullerton. So the first set was 25 to 11, second set was 25 to 15. Third set, Hornets showing lots of heart, but unable to get the comeback through as they fall in the third set 25 to 21. As I think the story of the night is going to be the OCC front row with all those blocks and easy tap overs. Yeah, um, you definitely saw from the start, it kind of felt like the Pirates got off to a quick start and they just kept they kept it on the gas the entire night. Um, they definitely scored off those big blocks up front at the net. They and came clutch at, towards the end of those to close them out in a dominating fashion. 
And OCC, good luck to them going into this playoffs. They played a fantastic match. Like you had said, Garrett, they came off really strong in that first set. They took a very, very large lead, I think by like at least 10 or 12, and Fullerton got off to a little bit of a shaky start, but uh, OCC was able to really capitalize on a lot of these little defensive pockets that the Hornets left open, uh, being able to strike down on those rebounds and being able to continue these attacks on this uh, Hornet offense and defense. Well, that's going to do it here as the Orange Coast Pirates win this three sets to none. My name is Jacob Fisk. Alongside me was Garrett Geimer and Jerry Roque. Thank you for tuning in. You have been watching Fullerton College Volleyball on 90.1 KBPK.